hey Holden, it's a pleasure to have you here in Scala Day Berlin with us. Thanks, it's, it's really fun to be here in Berlin. Thank you. Um, what would you think uh, Spark's biggest challenges are right now and what can we expect from the Spark 2.0 versions? Sure, yeah, I think there's a lot of really exciting things um, happening in Spark 2.0. Uh, and, and I think the challenges, there's, there's several. Um, I think uh, evolving the streaming uh, API definitely over time is, is a very important and big challenge because uh, more and more data is moving into an online processing sort of model and less of a batch processing model. So I think growing there is, is one of the big challenges. Uh, for Spark 2.0, some of the really exciting stuff is happening in Spark SQL. Um, and data sets are, are really wonderful and exciting. Uh, they give you sort of compile time typed data frames, uh, which is just wonderful. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to intermix uh, functional and relational code together, uh, really giving you a lot of flexibility. Uh, and there's, there's always the, the usual performance improvements. Uh, the storage layer itself is getting much faster. And, and I think so we'll see a, a really cool API as well as a lot of really exciting uh, sort of performance improvements coming in the pipeline. Yes. And for a Scala developer who just started getting interested in big data and Spark, which path would you recommend to follow? What tools are available to get them up to speed? Sure, that's, that's a really good question. And I'm incredibly biased. Um, I think Learning Spark is a good book, uh, but as a co-author, of course, I think it's a good book. Um, I think there's the, the notebook environments are really great for learning, uh, maybe not for production code, uh, but and, and you see a lot of companies now with, with different big data notebook environments. There's IBM, there's Databricks, um, and there's, there's just everyone is, is making these things. Um, and I think it's a really good way to explore and play. And I find exploring and playing with tools is the best way to learn them. Uh, so definitely buy several copies of my book. Um, but after you've done that, you know, try and explore some of the uh, just notebook environments. Um, and of course, also, uh, there's, there's another book, High Performance Spark, but that's, that's for later on. Yeah, that's my next one. <laughs> yeah, that's the next one. Yeah. And with all this big data frenzy happening right now, and the great interest that is around Scala and Spark. How would you imagine the future of both technologies and the data, data uh, industry for the next five years? I mean, the, the next five years is just so long. Um, I think we have enough problems trying to predict the next six months, uh, let alone the next five years. So I'm probably going to take somewhat of a cop out on this. Uh, but I think we'll, we'll continue to see a lot of really great tools built with both functional and relational paradigms. They've really proven their, their utility for big data tools. Um, and I think Scala is, is definitely a really great language for a lot of big data stuff. Um, and, and we'll keep seeing improvements there. But it's really hard to say what, what the next five years look like in, in anything more than very broad strokes. Um, sorry about that no, one. It's OK. I, we're looking forward to it, uh, the great future of Scala. Um, thank you very much for your time, Holden. Oh, no, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much.